And welcome to the Vanu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. I'm your host, Shane, coming to you from the Free Republic of, uh, the Free Republic of Pasnia, the self liberators Paradise. Uh, that website is Pasnia, P-A-Z-N-I-A dot com. If you'd like to learn all about the Second Realm Network that we're building. Today I have an article authored by Kyle Reardon, a former founding co-host of this podcast, originally published in February of 2017, uh, just a short month after our official launch. I stumbled across it in the past few days and uh, thought it was another one worthy of republication uh, in podcast and video format. It's titled, A Servile Society, The Value of Import-Export. Uh, if you happen to be one of our new listeners, this will give you a great introduction to some Vanu terminology and how Vanuans approach interactions with the Servile Society, the First Realm, whatever you'd like to call that society uh, whose foundation is coercion. But of course, we did do a full episode back in Season 1. Uh, that was Episode 9 of the podcast. Uh, if you'd like a more in-depth discussion, uh, or just visit vanupodcast.com forward slash 9. But uh, before I turn you over to that article, a couple quick updates. Uh, we just had a Pazian leave after a week-long stay here at the Free Republic. Uh, we got some good work done on the homestead. And uh, since he's also an experienced programmer uh, and developer, we made some progress in, uh, some progress in planning uh, on a relaunch of the Pazian website which I hope will serve as an enjoyable, uh, valuable, and engaging digital second realm. Uh, this conversation included the inclusion, uh, for lack of a better you know, way to put it, included the inclusion of a Pasnia Committee of Correspondence chat on a self-hosted matrix server, uh, which I believe will serve as the form function uh, of the website. Uh, traditional forms are a bit outdated, in my humble opinion. Uh, beyond that, I should have my Pasnia library uh, slash freedom box in the next week or so, uh, courtesy of our friend Jamie Bakonic, and uh, we'll begin working on that. I'll also mention uh, on the LUA website, uh, we'll have uh, you know, some dark phones available uh, at some point here in the near future. But uh, in regards to the Pasnia library and the freedom box, I won't have much more to say uh, until I actually get to experience the software, so stay tuned. Uh, it's worth noting, though, if you're a founding stakeholder, uh, you will be able to snag one of these yourself. Uh, and further, if you happen to be a tier two stakeholder, uh, you'll get it basically at cost. Uh, so please do go check out the 2021-2022 uh, Stakeholder Bulletin for more on that. Uh, find it at pasnia.com forward slash 2021 bulletin. Otherwise, the only real cold month of the year has arrived, and uh, so much of our time is spent unfreezing water containers for the various animals raised here on the property and uh, planning for what's to come in the spring. Uh, March and April will bring us to the construction of the new livestock fence, uh, giving them much greater room to roam. Uh, we'll get the honey bee, uh, honey bee flow hive set up. Uh, the Pasnia bird shanty will be relocated. Uh, mushroom foraging will kick into full gear now that we'll actually have a, or I'll have a, actually have a full year, which I'm really, really excited for. Uh, we'll hopefully go into the rabbit business come summer or fall, and uh, Orr and I have lots of ideas for our various garden zones uh, to name some upcoming projects. Uh, on that note, it's worth mentioning that we are proud to announce uh, the launch of the Great Pasnia Seed Exchange. At this time, you can find it on Telegram, uh, t.me forward slash Pasnia Seeds. Again, t.me forward slash Pasnia Seeds. But eventually, it will be added to the website and maybe the Freedom Box. Uh, we'll see, but please do hop in there. Check out the pinned message at the top for instructions and uh, start trading today. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, lastly, please do consider checking us out over at Libertarian Type Publications. Uh, we publish Vanu zines from the 1960s and 70s, anarchist freedom strategy guides, uh, such as Second Round Book on Strategy and My Vanu Strategy for Self-Liberation. Uh, great anarchist and agorist fiction like Brush Fire and Hashtag Agora. And now, you can also purchase incredible items from Aura's Apothecary uh, to help you and your family achieve the goal, uh, your goal of health liberation. Uh, if I can make one suggestion, uh, the Comfrey Salve is fantastic, and uh, the Comfrey grown here at the Free Republic. Uh, just visit libertyandertack.com uh, Liberty to check out our selection, and for Aura's Apothecary, find her product category there uh, in the top of the sidebar. I think I'll leave the instruction there for now. Uh, please enjoy Kyle's article titled, A Servile Society, The Value of Import-Export. And always remember... Vanu is yours for the making, and the second realm is yours for the building. Cheers to a more liberated 2022. TVP 130, A Servile Society, The Value of Import-Exports Quote, The spectacle is the ruling order's non-stop discourse about itself, its never-ending monologue of self-praise, its self-portrait at the stage of totalitarian domination of all aspects of life. The spectacle is totally dogmatic, and it is incapable of arriving at any really solid dogma. Nothing stands still for it. This instability is the spectacle's natural condition, but it is completely contrary to its natu natural inclination. The dominion of, a, of the concentrated spectacle is a police state. End quote. That's uh, from Guide to Board, 1967, uh, his book, The Society of the Spectacle. 
A servile society could be defined as one that does not respect self-ownership or individual liberty, but rather heralds the supremacy of government and authority. In other words, it upholds the collective as superior to the individual. Every aspect of the servile society is oriented towards unmitigated subservience towards those malfunctioning individuals who falsely imagine themselves to be our rulers. Regardless of the specific flavor of authoritarianism, a key recurring theme of the servile society is that blind obedience to the state is considered to be a virtue. Throughout the 1960s and early 70s, Rayo considered the servile society as essentially being composed largely of good Germans, specifically good Americans, and therefore a fundamental threat to his freedom. As he was formulating Vanu, the condition or quality of, as well as the action of achieving an invulnerability to coercion, Rayo expressed the following thought, quote, An optimally liberated lifestyle must involve a sort of one-directional isolation. The liberator maintains his access to their open but not free trading centers while denying them access to his home. This requires a skillful blend of concealment and deception, plus perhaps elements of mobility and deterrence. A free man obtains information, techniques, key equipment, and supplies out of the servile society, exporting labor or products in return. And during import-export activities, he practices deception, perhaps carries a driver's license, genuine or faked, perhaps pays some sales taxes he cannot conveniently avoid. But the free man's home base is physically concealed. There he spends most of his time. There he may sleep, imbibe, love, design, build trade with fellow freemen, and raise children in relative safety from the savages of state. A free man's home must be a figurative castle, end quote. Detailing earlier the five protective means of defense, deterrence, mobility, deception, and concealment in equal measure, Rayo conceived of how at least two, if not three or four of them, could be used to enable the importation of needed goods and knowledge, while also facilitating the exportation of labor or products back out to the servile society. This one-directional isolation implicitly recognized that despite the dangers of the servile society to one's liberty, some degree of interaction was still necessary for survivability. Strategically speaking, the idea behind import-export is to concisely explain how venuans, those who have an invulnerability to coercion, relate to the servile society. Given all the political crusading, controlled schizophrenia, and collective movementism of the servile society, those who are pursuing venuance, the process of achieving an invulnerability to coercion, ought to shield themselves from the time sinks the servile society tries to distract everyone with, like the news cycle. Rio continues, quote, The higher maximum of satisfaction is attained by someone with a liberated home base, plus some import-export with the servile society. For him, contact with the state is an occasional annoyance and danger, not a big part of his life. Thus, he can avoid the psychological paralysis that afflicts so many nonconformists. Compared to the opportunistic serf, he may enjoy somewhat fewer conveniences, at present, but is happier overall. On the other hand, he has more than someone living in the primitive isolation required for 100% freedom." End quote. Developing a second realm with its own venuums, the place or situation of an invulnerability to coercion, is the focus of vanuists, those who advocate for an invulnerability to coercion, and venumers, those skilled at an invulnerability to coercion alike, not trying to save or restore the minarchist ship that is, the Ameri that is American republicanism with its decrepit constitution. Good Americans, or system inhabitants, as one of my readers calls them during her broadcasts, often claim that they value freedom and liberty while waving the flag, yet they're actually lying to themselves and each other when they do so. What they really value is safety, convenience, and authority. By contrast, anything that's risky, obstructive, or decentralized, peer-to-peer, -peer, is feared, hated, and scorned by good Americans reflexively without question. As Rayo put it, quote, Freedom is not a monolithic entity. There are various degrees, but not all degrees are necessarily viable. For most people, I suspect that choice is between predominantly servile, vulnerable lifestyles and predominantly liberated and vulnerable lifestyles, end quote. Emotional security blankets, whether under the guises of patriotism, nationalism, or even Trumpism, are just disposable labels that are evocative of consum conspicuous consumption, consumerism, which in reality are all anti-free markets. My point here is that good Americans are more than happy to remain quite vulnerable to coercion, provided that they solely re rely upon legal interstices for protection against said coercion. Communication within the servile society is greatly hampered because any line of cohesive thought gets interrupted by one thing or another. Putting up a premise, much less a syllogism, logical argument, is virtually impossible in most circumstances, 
because the good American's mode of speech does not allow enough time to articulate much of anything due to repeated interruptions. There is only just enough time to spit out either commands or questions. You! Grab that! Or, may I take your order? But nowhere near enough to actually facilitate a real conversation about much of anything. That being said, this handicap of the servile society need not inhibit commercial activity, although it does inhibit cultural activity, but it's not like you need them for that, do you? Rayo explained that, quote, We believe primitivism would mean less vanu in the long run. Primitive societies run afoul of bludgeoning sooner or later. Consistent avoidance of something requires some knowledge of it. And there are too many capabilities, things we wish to develop, which require equipment, materials, and knowledge out of the other society. Technology our society doesn't have yet. But personal travel isn't necessary for import-export. All that is needed, for now, is a way to get parcels and messages in and out, interfaces with the freighting and communication services of that society, end quote. In other words, import-export activities are a practical stopgap until Venumi, the art of achieving an invulnerability to coercion, is better developed. Once our second realm of Venuums and Agoras enjoys its own infrastructure, separate and independent from the Servile Society, then import-export will greatly diminish, or possibly evaporate, given enough time. Rayo also wrote that, quote, In one sense, such a freeman cannot be completely free, since his import-export is restricted. Neither would a resident of a utopian free country who traded with someone in Russia or America. Import-export is easier for extraterritorial freemen than for residents of another country, since controlling millions of square miles of interior is vastly more difficult than thousands of linear miles of border. In either case, with growth, import-export becomes relatively smaller and more in the hands of the specialists at border crossings. The liberated home freeman, unlike the conventionally living libertarian, can segregate import-export from the rest of his life, essential for development of durable, growing, joyous free many cultures. Simply put, networks of private property enclaves with their own borders, invulnerable to coercion by our enemy the state, with their own folkways that cater to your lifestyle preferences, are a highly practical way to securely exercise one's autonomy. You don't need coercive monopolies calling themselves government in order to tax so as to fund any public services, whether security, roads, or pensions, because it is the market, not the state, which truly provides us with the indispensable necessities of life. Future projections are rather optimistic, if only due to the necessity of surviving early 21st century America such as it is. Where you observe that, quote, more and more people are rejecting the attitudes and roles of the servile society. While only a small minority of the whole population, they number in the tens of thousands. Some attempt to turn back the clock by moving to farms or small towns, but rural dwellers are conspicuously unfree. So those who really want freedom will search in other directions, end quote. Potential resistance to the status quo is there, but it ought to be harnessed so that the productive capabilities of truly freed Americans can kick off the end of the state. Making this more concrete, Rayo once suggested elsewhere that when purchasing land, it might be preferable for the title deed holder to be a woman who has limited interfacing with the servile society, because she wouldn't be targeted for military conscription, and also, she wouldn't be socially expected to be employed. Keep in mind, this recommendation of his was made in 1971. Excuse me, such a heroine choosing to do this would lower the risk that the land would be forcibly confiscated by the state due to lawsuits, taxes, or regulations. Vanu is yours for the making, but only if the social norms and cultural expectations of the servile society are rejected wholesale through import-export beneficial to Vanuans. As Rayo succinctly phrased it, quote, function determines form, means determine ends, end quote. Put another way, it's not the destination, it's the journey. Or maybe the journey makes the destination what it is. Much like voluntarism, Vani represents a means, an end, and an insight. Part of that very insight is that good Americans within the servile society are living vulnerable lifestyles, and thus they have nobody but themselves to blame for when tragedy befalls them. For as Rayo said, quote, One who continues in a vulnerable lifestyle and then complains when he is plundered is somewhat like a West Indies resident who built a flimsy house and then blames the next hurricane for demolishing it. Certainly, people are to blame when they inflict coercion, but merely blaming them does not bring liberty. The self-responsible person builds a home which can withstand likely storms and develops a way of life not vulnerable to likely attempts at predation. End quote. The truth is that they had a choice, all of them, and so do you. 
You've just heard TVP number 130, a Servile Society, the value of import-export. Uh, to read this article in full or to uh, check out the video uh, or the uh, or download the audio, just visit vonnypodcast.com forward slash 130.